to shift gears and do a startup spotlight. We're talking about these innovators working on new models. And we've had the opportunity to get to know Nick Desai, the CEO and founder of um, Heal, very recently. But we, were, we reached out as soon as we saw the article about him launching. And it's really about doctors on demand. It's about house calls. Um, and I was thrilled when I read the article because he said he was really focused on not only kids, who can be hard to get to the doctors sometimes, so I hear, um, and also seniors. And I think that the idea of a um, doctor coming to your home for an older adult is really powerful. And so we'd love you to hear from Nick about their model and what they're bringing to market and what we think has exciting potential to impact senior care. OK. Here you go. Awesome. OK. <laughs> Thank you, Katie and Stephen. It's uh, great to be here. Barbara, I think, in the audience asked a question, and I swear it wasn't a plant, about what about the house call visit, what about the doctor coming to the house. Um, it's not in the future, it's here now, and we, that's what we deliver. But I want to start by telling you a little, a uh, very quick story about why I'm here today. Uh, I'm of Indian ethnic origin from India, as I imagine many of you in the audience are. Um, and I'm here because my grandfather uh, got on a steamship from a small village in India in 1950, and made it over to America and thought this is the greatest place in the world and brought his children, my parents, uh, here to the United States. And they grew up here and I grew up here. So in 1990, when my grandfather said he's moving back to India after 40 years in the US and the UK, I asked him why. I remember I was graduating college and I said, why would you move back to India after all these years? And he said, because America is the most incredible country in the world in which to be young and the worst place in the world to get old. Right? And I think that we all in this room are, have an important function just by being here, which is to be part of changing that legacy. Right? Fast forward the clock from that conversation 24 years to last year when I had a son. And my little 15-month-old boy, Avon, who at the time was seven months old, was a gigantic pain to take to the doctor's office, right? And my wife's a physician, and I'm a tech CEO, so we have a lot of freedom and luxury in our life, yet it was an incredible pain to take him to the doctor's office. And it hit me that whether you're one or 81, it is really hard to get to the doctor's office, yet the doctor is that binding glue that brings care together. In these conferences, I spoke at HIMSS earlier this year, and I heard so much about this technology and that gadget and this gizmo, but it's the doctor that's the connective tissue to compassionate care. So we created HEAL, and with that, I'm gonna show you a quick 30-second video and then get back to talking. There once was a time when the doctor came to you they took the time to make you feel better There's supposed to be a video. and put your... <laughs> I'm sure there will be in a moment. That beautiful audio is... We'll give it one more try, otherwise we'll skip it and move on to the slides. <clears throat> in the meantime, did anyone else have a hard... Oh, here we go. Oh, these are slides, okay. Are we doing the video or should I just keep moving? Keep moving? Okay, great. So anyways, what the video shows in 30 seconds is what our in-home experience is like. And you know, Chip Connolly's this uh, speaker this afternoon, I don't know if he's here yet, but it was, I heard him speak last September, right after I had this idea to create Heal after a disastrous visit to the doctor with my own son, and he was transformative to me and made me understand the importance that if you're going to change an industry, you can't just deliver on customer expectations, you can't just exceed them and deliver on their desires, but you have to transform and reset their expectations in the first place, right? And whether that's in a, a one medical in a, in a much better experience in a traditional doctor's office, or whether that's a video conference, or we think what is the most important important transformation, a doctor coming to your door, the visit can't just be, oh, okay, it's kind of cool a doctor came to my house, but rather something that gets you to say, this is how medicine should be in my life, right? This is how I want to interact with a doctor. And so what Heal is, is a simple iPhone, uh, Android, Apple Watch, Amazon Echo app that lets you hit a button on your phone and get a doctor to come to your house. And it's so simple to use, I could use it right here while I'm on stage talking to you, run the Heal app, it will ask me in a second if this is a life-threatening medical emergency. I'll say no. It'll detect my location. I'll say if I want a doctor for an adult or child. I'll say child. I'll put in my symptoms. I'll confirm, and a doctor will come to my house. Right Now there's a doctor on the way here, actually, which is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> so, and a pediatrician at that. 
So next, next slide, how do I go to the next slide? So when we decided to create this, who is we? First of all, we is myself and my wife. My wife is a board certified uh, uh, physician practicing internal medicine, nephrology and kidney medicine. She was chief of medicine at two Southern California hospitals and she would be here except that she's eight months pregnant with our second son who is due shortly after Katie's little boy. Um, and we decided that it was really important to have great investors, a great team, and great advisors and physicians involved in what we're doing. Today, there are 48 doctors on heel. Uh, they serve, again, from age one to 101 years old. We're live in Los Angeles and San Francisco. And right now, today, if you download it and use the heel app, you could actually get a doctor to come to you and take care of your needs. And we'll talk about how that works in a moment. So why did we make heel? Because it should be easier to get a doctor than it is to get a pizza. Right? And I think there's too much innovation in Silicon Valley. We were in the Wall Street Journal two weeks ago, and the article was about the 10 best on-demand apps, and there's an Uber for everything now, and that's great. And we were thrilled to be there. And one of the apps was literally an app just to order pizza. So you preload your favorite pizza place, and you preload your favorite toppings and your credit card, and then you hit, it's a one-button pizza order app. And I love pizza. I had a pizza last night, right? But I'm thinking to myself, do we really need to make it easier to order a pizza? You know, <laughs> Given the fact that there are billions of pizzas eaten every year, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's pretty easy. We wanted to make it easier, easier for you, for the adults who use us, the young tech workers in San Francisco who don't want to leave their office or their startup and who want to see a doctor right there at the office who don't even have a primary care provider relationship. For your children, right? Because anyone in this room who has children knows that the moment you turn into the garage at the doctor's office and pay the $14 for parking, you're the kids wailing already, okay? And they're wailing the entire time they're at the doctor's office. But I did an interesting experience. My 14-month-old got his second Tdap booster, uh, which is a vaccine, in, his ha in our house because the doctor came to our house and gave him the vaccine. And he was playing with his train set the entire time and when he got the little prick in his butt, he just went and scratched it and went on to playing. There wasn't a single tear shed. <clears throat> and of course, most importantly for seniors, if go taking your children to the doctor is about convenience and making it easier and the difference between an easy visit and missing work and getting more sleep and peace of mind, which are all important. For seniors, my wife does dialysis on uh, elderly patients who often will spend an entire day waiting for the uh, transport uh, to come the, and take them to the facility to wait to get dialysis done. Now, yes, in some cases, like dialysis, right now the portability isn't there, but the point is they'll wait the same amount for a, a, an office visit. They'll sit and wait, like as if the, the, the most important people, our seniors, don't have something better to do than sit around all day to see a doctor. <clears throat> One of the things that we think a lot about in the context of bringing a home visit and that transformative experience is about the trends in medicine, cultural humility, compassionate care, and improved outcomes, right? Cultural humility is an emerging trend coming here right out of UC San Francisco about seeing the world through the patient's eyes, right? Seeing what they, where their work environment is, what their home environment is, what their life is like, who lives with them, what their language barriers are, what medications they take, you know, is their home clean? Are there cats? Is it loud? Is it noisy? All of these things you instantly get a sense of when you go to the patient, right? And you sit with them. Compassionate care is obviously about being a patient advocate. It's about so much more than treating the illness and treating the wound. It's about getting to know the family and the context, all of which, again, when, when you walk in to see a cat child or a, grand, a, a grandparent and the kids are there and the this and that and you see it's a loving home environment versus a senior who might be unfortunately living alone in an assisted living facility, you have a completely different, you have a completely uh, powerful understanding of the mental context of which they live, which we know has a huge impact on health outcomes, right? And ultimately, all of that drives to uh, improved outcomes. Now. We're on any platform, as I said. You can make a simple old school for phone call, 844-644-HEAL. You can use the Echo, the Watch, the iPhone, Android. People use HEAL for common afflictions, chronic conditions, post-acute care. Transition from post-acute to long-term care is an area we're looking at. We had a, a conversation with Arnie and these guys yesterday, which we're very excited about because the transition from post-acute to long-term care in the Incidence of readmission to the hospital and the costs associated with that aspect of care is enormous in our care system. The uh, ER abuse from both 
uh, elderly patients who are on Medicare and so not footing the bill, as well as the Affordable Care Act, which has brought a lot of people into high ceiling insurance plans. And once they've eaten that $5,000 of out-of-pocket cost, they may as well go to the ER, right? Because they don't mind waiting, except that they do mind waiting because they do have a life and so do seniors, right? And whether it's the cost to the payer or the cost to the family or the quality of medicine or the overloading of the ER for the patient who doesn't need to be there, there's a better way to do this, right? And we can come anywhere, home, office, school, senior living, assisted living, home, anywhere, right? Our doctors go anywhere. The typical arrival time is 22 minutes. Typical visit length is 25 minutes. And all of you in this room will appreciate that's about three times longer than the national average in a factory medicine or capitated care environment, right? And yes, we can actually make money doing that. Um, and we're ideally suited for older adults. And this is a point I really wanted to stress because I think it's important. The, the elderly population has a lot of, there's people in this room, there's people all over the country who are part of the care system for older adults, whether it's assisted living, the transportation providers, the, uh, the clinicians, the on-site nurses, the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But who is bringing all that together, right? In the UK or India, there's a doctor who comes to your house who brings all that together for senior citizens, right? If there was a doctor who could be that patient advocate, who could translate all that stuff and coordinate it in a way that the patient understood. And if that service then added modalities like, hey, the doctor's gonna come and check on you once a month, but the MA is gonna come in once a week and just set up your pillbox for you. Because you, don't, you have a resting tremor, or you don't know what, which pill is the right one to take when, and which one I take with food, and which one I take with water. And that delivers comprehensive, coordinated, compassionate care. I'll close by saying we've been live uh, in San Francisco and Los Angeles for about four weeks now. We have a net promoter score of plus 84. 39% of our customers are repeat customers. And so we're pretty excited about what we're doing. Thank you, everyone. For to one question, if that's, uh, somebody in the audience has a quick question. We have, uh, yeah, why don't we, uh, who's the closest to the microphone? Yeah, why don't you just go, gentlemen, to the microphone right there? Yeah, perfect. If it's, if it's on. If it's not, you can yell. Try it again. Okay, we got one here. Okay, uh, my name's Dick Gunther. I'm, I'm here from Avenida's Village down in Palo Alto. And I was invited as one of the tech-savvy seniors to try to give a little feedback. And uh, one of the things that I didn't hear from the first speaker or from yourself is, how are you gonna integrate this with the humongous data files in the doctor's office? Who's gonna put all that data into what system and how are they gonna do that? So I think that's a phenomenally important question. The question's about the integration of data, right? One of the big missing links, right, the holy grail in all this is what's called the longitudinal patient record being available as uh, actionable information at the point of interaction with the physician. And neither Tom from One Medical nor I singularly can solve that problem, right? The steps we are taking is using a state-of-the-art EMR. We use Practice Fusion, but there's no particular, you know, any state-of-the-art EMR that stores those medical records. We request them from your previous doctor and we auto-enable them to your, if you use heal and have a primary care physician, we will automatically send the records of your visit to that physician. Now, what needs to happen over time is that whether it's Apple Health, Google Health Kit, whatever the case is, or and in integrating with services like us, we all need to get more open about the techno technology behind the flow of data while not losing the incredible importance of the privacy and user control of the flow of data, right? Right information, right time controlled by user is, is a critical aspect of care, and we embrace that philosophy of openness on both ends, receiving and passing out information. And I think more and more people on the care providing, <coughs> excuse me, payer, every aspect of the care network need to embrace that um, to, to make that evolution happen. But I think it's a very important evolution. All right. I think with that, we should probably uh, wrap it up so that you have time for coffee. Thank you very much. Thank you.